everyone, it's Hannah and I thought I would sit and chat with you today about my knitting. I've got very glammed up for the occasion so I hope you appreciate the effort. Thought, oh goodness, those are envelopes. Thought it was time to get a bit dressed up and um, chat about knitting. In hindsight, I should have chosen a different lip colour. It is pink, but it's a red pink. I should have chosen a cool tone pink. It would have gone better with my top, but that's okay. We learn, we learn. It was too much hassle to wipe it off and reapply. I'm not a lipstick person. This is a, technically a lip stain, so that's gonna be fun later. One of the reasons I'm not a lipstick person is the fact that it comes off when you eat or drink anything. But I love how I look in lipstick, so maybe I need to just deal with it. My hair's also getting very long, so I don't really know what to do with it. Luckily, I'm getting it cut soon. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. If you are new, hello, welcome. It's nice to have you here. It'd be nice if you subscribed. I post a video every week, and uh, my name is Hannah. Hello. And I um, am a yarn dyer. I own Chromatic Yarns and The Corner of Craft, which is my overall business, The Corner of Craft. I make hand beaded stitch markers and uh, I haven't done a shop update in a really long time, but I have one coming up in a couple of weeks, which is very exciting because I'm currently working through a yarn pre-order. My cat is watching. She is judging me. Hey! That is Kim Chi. She's very cute. Um, and yeah, I've just got yarn everywhere. I've dyed four out of the five colourways of the pre-order. Very exciting. One to go, um, which I'll hopefully do tomorrow and maybe Friday, depending how long it takes me. Anyway, we have tea today. Of course we've got tea today. I've got Bird and Blend Cream Egg Tea, special for Easter. Uh, it's, I can't remember when it's, it stops being available. I think it might be end of the month, but I could be wrong. But today is Good Friday. For you, for me, it's not. It's casual Wednesday. So Easter is in a couple of days. So if you want it, get it. It is delicious. I love it so much. I will say, if you don't like tea, you won't like this tea. Because um, when you think cream egg, if, unless you're used to drinking flavoured teas, you think it's going to be the texture of a hot chocolate. I made this mistake quite a lot when I first started drinking flavoured teas. I was like, oh, this is going to be so good. And then you drink it like, oh, that's not the texture I was expecting. It's a watery mouthfeel because it's a cup of tea, but it is really nice. I will say it doesn't taste much like a cream egg, but it is really good if you like chocolatey sweet teas. Yes. Anyway, uh, so in February I filmed like a whip roundup because I used to have a monthly podcast. Um, I was getting very close to 100 episodes and I don't know if I'm going to restart this as a podcast or not. I haven't decided yet, um, but I thought if I just do like a regular thing where I chat about my knitting, that will also be nice. I felt like needing to do monthly podcasts was a bit stressful because I didn't, I don't consistently knit or crochet enough to um, have a consistent podcast. I used to do them fortnightly and I used to get so much done and I don't quite know how. But yeah, now I go through different phases. Sometimes I don't make much progress on things and then three months and I'm like, here is this thing again that I'm showing you once more and I feel like that gets a bit boring for people but I've actually made some progress on things since my whip roundup so that is very exciting. Finish things. Behold! I finished my TPCT. Let me lower this camera slightly. I'm going to show you my chest. I hope you don't mind. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I've got a vest on because um, I don't like having my midriff exposed. You coming over? You want to look out the window, I know you do. Uh, this is knit out of my Astral Menagerie colourway, which is one of the colourways I'm currently dying up for pre-order, on my Yak Sock base. Lovely. It's a Yak Merino nylon blend. Wonderful. And it's the TPCT, which is the perfect crop top. And um, it's just a little cropped top. In hindsight, you see the birdies? She sees the birdies. In hindsight, I... Well, the next one I make, because this is now the second one I've made, and definitely want to make another one. The other one I made was shorter shorter sleeves, and then this one is elbow length sleeves, which is, I quite enjoy, quite enjoy an elbow length sleeve. Uh, I did have to block it quite aggressively. I think I got a bit impatient with my increases, because and it doesn't say the amount of rows that you're meant to do between each increase, it just says a measurement, and maybe, 
maybe I kid myself on my measurements. So I might next time add a couple more rows in between each increase. And then you've got little bust decreases which fit perfectly on my personal fairness. That's a pretty spot on, pretty spot on uh, placement for my chest. But then I might knit a little bit longer underneath and make it a bit of a longer crop top. But this is a top to wear over the top of one particular dress but then I realised it goes very nicely with my dungarees so I mean it's quite short there's a bit of a gap before my dungarees start um so I, it, I I would have to wear a vest underneath it because I don't feel comfortable having my stomach hanging out as th that is where I carry my weight and that is my self-conscious part but having a vest on lovely fine no problem but yeah, I really enjoyed this knit. I cast this on for East Anglia Yarn Festival. The goal was to finish it by East Anglia Yarn Festival. And I finished it on the Wednesday before I left on the Friday. Very close. It was tense. But because the sleeves are so short, it was, it was fine. And I will show you how much of the yarn I have left. So I alternated skeins the whole way around. And I designated two skeins of yarn to this. I think a stripy one would be quite nice. Anyway, not the point. This is how much I have left of each, which is quite a significant amount. I could have done even longer sleeves. I usually do helical knitting. I've got mud on my dungarees and I've just spotted that. Anyway, I could, I'd usually do helical knitting to um, alternate skeins, but what I did for this one, and which is what I will be starting to do from now on, is when you get to the end of the row, you just drop and pick up the next, the other ball, and blah, blah, blah. And the reason you want to alternate skeins is because indie dyes are not perfect, we're not machines. There is some variation between colourways, even or between skeins, sorry, even if they're in the exact same pan. It can be different, you can get hot spots, even though I try to limit that as much as possible, and I try to send out skeins that are very similar to one another, but, you know, we're not perfect. So to stop any big difference when you're switching skeins, or to stop pooling. Alternate skeins please, thank you. We will appreciate it greatly. Uh, but yeah, I've got loads left. I'm gonna have a nice pair of socks out of that, I think. I need to weigh it, but it's a, sig it's a significant amount of yarn, really, isn't it? Um, I could get my scales and weigh it right. I'll do that, I'll do that, I'm back. So, 57 grams I have left, so this took 143 grams. Maths? Yes, that was very quick for me. Sometimes if I do maths quickly, I uh, question myself. But yeah, so that's not bad. You could definitely do a longer sleeve if you wanted to. I will say it's a bit snug here. I had to block this quite aggressively. Like I said, I think my measurements were slightly off, but that's okay, because I know for the next one. Um, don't be impatient. I think I did like eight rows, eight rounds between increases, and maybe I should have done 10. That It's that kind of minimal thing, but it adds up over the whole thing and yeah it's nice I enjoy it it's fun knit and it was pretty quick as you can imagine for oh goodness as you can imagine from uh, so little yarn so I reckon it'll be quite good for stash busting as well because I've seen a few people make stripy ones especially if you're a smaller size than me as well you'd be able to bust through stash but the fact that I think I knit the medium because you want a bit of negative ease and I'm a bit weirdly in between sizes so I went for a medium um, which I think is for a 37 inch bust and I think my actual measurement might be 40 if I remember correctly I don't know I can't I can't fully remember why do I measure in inches I don't know but I do we're, we're weird in the UK oh I have a bra on there so it's not entirely accurate 40 41 and 41 inches bust um, and then I think the next size is 42 and I didn't want positive ease, I wanted negative ease. So I went and I knit the 37 and then just blocked it a little aggressively and I hate these tape measures so much. Why did I do this? I don't know. You didn't need to know my bust measurement, but maybe you do because you want to know the fit. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, not the point. But yeah, that's very exciting. I finished something and I tell you what, I finished something else as well. A bit of a story behind this one bit of a story I've also just weighed this so my love note I have finished my love note um I technically finished it a few days ago but then I <laughs> wove in all my ends when I finished what I did is I followed the pattern this is by Tin Can Knits BT Dubs I followed the pattern 
and um, it says to cast it off using the body size needle and so I did that um, just like a regular cast off and then I wove in all my ends I tried it on over my head fine then I wove in all my ends and then I had a chatty patreon video and I tried my love night on over my head and it did not quite fit over my head let's take these off I don't have makeup on I just got my scalp mmm mmm I might have to do something about this I tried it on before I wove the ends in in all fairness okay oh god I'm stuck that's a, that's a snug that's a snug neck band so what I did yesterday was I picked up all my stitches again unpicked my cast off with mohair and did a stretchier cast off and now it fits I haven't even blocked it but yeah oh delightful I haven't actually properly tried this on yet maybe I should maybe I should try this on but anyway so the yarn that I used, I weighed this, this is 237 grams, so um, I think I knit the 42 inch bust, anyway, um, you could knit this with two skeins of mohair and two skeins of um, four ply, because I had three designated and I caked up all three and I ended up using all three but I definitely didn't need to I just didn't want a big variation when I picked up my neckline stitches again because this was when I was doing helical knitting and I couldn't work out how to do helical is there a bird but there's a bird uh, I couldn't work out how to do helical knitting in the lace work this is unblocked because I only finished the neck yesterday but um, I couldn't work out how to do it but next time I'd be fine just doing the drop and pick up thing. Uh, I've still got a few ends to weave in because I had to then add some extra yarn when I was doing my actual cast off round two because I then ran out um, which was I found a good sign because all of this needed new yarn but um, I had a really big head. I have a really big head. I still have a really big head. So it didn't fit so I did a stretchier cast off. I didn't do Jenny's. I did, I can't remember what it's called but it's one that I do quite often. Um, you knit one, this is one by one rib, so you knit one, you purl one, and then you purl those two together. And then you knit one, and then you knit those two together. And yeah, it creates a bit of a stretchy cast off. I will say, it flares on, like, sleeves and the bottom, but I just did, I didn't do um, a stretchy cast off for the sleeves and the bottom, and I think that'll be fine. There's a bit of give in it. I kind of, I cast this on in January, and I kind of got a bit stagnant with it. This is going to catch on all of my bracelets. I got a bit stagnant with it because I didn't know how long to make the body and I was just unsure and I'm not sure I'm gonna have to take out these sleeves as well. This is not stretchy enough. Okay that's fine. That is not a problem. Okay that's good. It's a good length. Doop. Just stack in my, stack in my knits. Oh uh, maybe it's alright. Okay, yeah, no, that's nice. That's nice. That's a good length. It's got space to grow a little bit. Oh, how exciting. Look at me finishing garments. I haven't put this on properly, but you, you get the gist. You get the gist. Um, I kind of made it the length that the pattern suggested. I followed the pattern for this one. I've seen a few people do different variations. Oh, I didn't talk about the wool I used. Anyway, the yarn that I... Oh, gosh, I'm stuck. Oh, God. This is why you never try things on with glasses on. I, I have freed myself. So the yarn that I used is um, from pff, pff, the Fibre Fox. We're all mad here is the sock yarn. Uh, yeah. We're all mad here, which is a lovely variety of teals. And I've got so much left. And then I dyed up some teal mohair um, to go with it. And it's just made an overall very nice teal jumper. This was one of the plans from my um, vlogmas video where I talked about projects I wanted to make this, this year. Oh, I've got a big old smudge on my specs now. So this was one of the plans from that project, from those projects, and I'm glad that I finally did it. And yeah, because the plan was to get through some of my stash this year. So far, not bad. Um, Partly because I've sold some of it, <laughs> partly because I've knit some of it, 
But yeah, I really enjoyed this. But I followed the pattern exactly. I noticed that some people cast on the neck and then increase and then, you know, like a standard top down jumper, which I understand and it kind of makes sense. And do I have mohair stuck to my glasses now? It's tickling my face, is that what's happening? But how I did it is I did the provisional cast on which is what the pattern calls for. And then you knit the lace and then you put your sleeves on hold, you knit your body. Um, I made it a bit longer. I didn't do the high-low thing. That's not my style. So I just knit it and then cast off. I didn't do the short rows at all. And then I picked up the provisional cast on, which I was a bit worried about. I'm covered in mohair now. I can feel it. I'm just gonna de-mohair myself. Okay, I think that's better. I might just be itchy for a little bit, but yeah. So I did the provisional cast on and then picked up the stitches, did the decrease and then did the, the neck. But yeah, no, it was quite a fun knit. I don't know if it's, I'll see how much I wear it and then I'll assess, I suppose, because it seems to be the pattern that everyone knits multiple times and they finish it. They're like, I love it. But I cast this on in January and I started it when I went down to my parents uh, to visit them after Christmas. And then I went to Sicily and I didn't take it with me because I know some airlines are funny about larger knitting needles so I didn't take it with me and then I came back and then cast this on shortly afterwards and then this so this kind of got abandoned it wasn't like a super quick knit even though I know some people can knit them in no time at all because it is quite a large needle it's quite a big gauge of stitches um, I had to get my, my bigger size what's it interchangeable stitches out so that's that shows that but yeah I did alternate skeins throughout all of this as well and yeah I'm excited to block it and start wearing it because spring is not quite here yet we've had sunny day yesterday I dried yarn outside very exciting but we've had a whole lot of rain uh, we're getting someone in to check out the roof because we have a leak and I mean we've had the leak for a really long time I reckon it's in the chimney and I reckon it's not going to be cheap what a fun exciting time <laughs> not fun and exciting at all anyway uh, I also finished some socks I haven't woven in the ends on these which is very unlike me maybe my scissors are in heat they're not I've lost my tiny red pair of scissors I have a tiny red pair of scissors that fit in my notions pouch and they've got little red handles I've had them for such a long time and they go on holiday with me they go on the airplane with me I've had them since I lived in Germany I reckon I got them in maybe 2016 um lovely never lost them I don't know where they are so that's slightly heartbreaking but I finished a pair of socks these are the Thursday night socks it's a pattern by uh sock witchery Lindsay and inspired by Critical Role. She used my yarn for the initial pattern. I was like, oh, very nice. So I kept a skein of an Astral Menagerie sock set that I dyed up in December. That was before I launched this collection and have since tweaked this colorway, which is good. I'm glad I knit it up um, because I've since tweaked it. So it looks like this instead of like this now, but that's okay because that's what we do. You tweak things. Uh, so, this is it. It came with a grey mini skein. I did a heel flapping gusset. I know. Glutton for punishment. I usually like the new depths heel. Uh, but it's just a really fun ribbed sock. It's just a different a different type of rib. And it's a really cool pattern. And I will be making more of these. Um, I'm in a, back in my vanilla sock era right now. But that's okay. It, so yeah, this pulled quite a lot. And whilst it worked fine for Astral Menagerie and it works fine for a pair of socks, I wanted a bit more colour variation in it because it was a very blue with a few speckles. I wanted more. So uh, I switched up the colourway. But this was my D&D knitting for a while and I finished it at the Knit Night at East Stangley Yarn Festival. I cast off the toes and started a new project, a new sock. Very exciting. I'm distracted by my cat right now because she wants to get in her comf comfy little sleep area which is on top of my bubble wrap. But I've got mail sacks in the way because that's my storage space. It's not her cat napping space. Okay, now we're back into whips because um, we are. I'm a bit overwhelmed. I want to start a new knitting jumper. I'm trying really hard to ignore the rustling I'm really sorry I'm slightly overwhelmed by my jumper stash I obviously have plans for these things so it's not like I don't have plans for these things but I don't know what to cast on and also I might change my plans so yeah 
I was almost, I almost cast on the Whitmore cardigan, and I mean that's not off limits. Out of dream of candy unicorns, because that'll be lovely. And then yeah, I just I can't decide what to make, so I've just kind of ignored it for a little bit. I have cast started something else instead but we'll chat socks whilst we're on the topic of socks what is my cat doing so this is my I'll wait till my cat gets situated so this is my cinnamon knit if you follow me on my short form content even on here you may have seen it it I've had a few videos of uh, demonstrating how long a film is by how much knitting I got done during said film um, I need to do these more often I need to make them a more regular thing because people seem to enjoy them quite a lot they don't always have to be in the cinema so maybe I will Friday night commit to watching something on a Friday night put a film on and knit through it uh, because Mario tends to go to bed really early and just make that my Friday night thing um, but these socks are um, the yarn I believe is called Neon Steps, it is definitely by the Yarn Badger though and is on her Sparkle Sock base and I've got the mini skein to go with it I still have to put a heel in because I haven't done that on this one but the toe is complete oh I did not leave much of an end there for the kit for the um, grafting did I but yeah I need to put my heel in probably up, up here somewhere, probably that one don't know, unsure, I'm worried I've made the leg too short Anyway, don't matter. Uh, but this is the second one. I'm using 2.5 millimeter needles. And it's a st 60 stitch count sock. So it's a really fun colorway. I'm really enjoying it. It's not super duper sparkly because it's a uh, Stellina base, but it's still very nice. And yeah, I'm worried I've not made the leg long enough. I'm sure I have, but I'm pretty sure. So this is, it came in 250 grams and I think I've still got I've still got another one. I don't know where it is. It might be on my desk. I've still got another one. So that's good. It means I'll be able to get another pair of socks out of it. So if you know me and we're buddies, you might be getting a pair of these socks. Who knows? Who knows? My needles of choice are higher, higher sharps, if you're interested. I love a higher, higher sharp. The the thing gets a bit whoop, but that's okay. Cable gets a bit in your face, I think is what I was trying to say. That's okay. Um, but yeah, I'm loving these I think they're really really fun and that is in my down sheepy lane bag she is no longer dying yarn uh, she is no longer making bags it's all very sad but yes it's got my caduceus pin on it it's a tea bag so I've also got my let's go make a cup of tea pin and my lockdown sock down pin that I made and I have some new pins coming to the shop in the shop update but yeah that is the bag I love it oh and then the, uh, the contrasting fabric is just like naming types of tea. Oh, so fun. In case you haven't gathered, I really like tea. And then I have another sock while we're on socks. This is living in my uh, the little grey girl bag, which has a jester pin on it. It had to. It's a donut bag. It worked. And also my little tape measure. Love that tape measure. Oh, there is some more yarn there from that jumper. Pop that in my scraps. This, yeah, why do I have another tape measure in there? Goodness me. This yarn is by Giddy Yarns and it is in the Angelina colorway. This is sock numero uno. I must be getting near to doing the toe now. And yeah, I've got a little stitch marker that I made, cherry blossoms. I've ordered some more beads to make cherry blossoms. So I will have them hopefully in the next shop update as well because um, yeah, I figured I should make some. I needed to order some more beads. So yeah. It's really beautiful. I will be doing a Kirby Wurby. I almost said Jiggly Wiggly. It's not it. Kirby Wurby's Afterthought Heel. And this is the contrast. It came with lovely lilac colour. And the nice thing about Helen's yarn is, well, first off, this was just a nice little 50 gram, which makes it a little bit cheaper because I can get a pair of socks out of 50 grams with a contrast. Um, but she gumballs them all, which is really nice. Really nice. So, yes, I must be getting towards the toe because if I time this well, I might not time it well. Oh, if I do a contrast toe, then I would be able to time it well. If I time it well, I'll be able to continue the stitch pattern. If I start the toe after this blue, then the then the um, lilac colour will be immediately after it. But that is going to be very short. I'll play it by ear. 
I'll play it by ear. If, if my socks are sisters and not twins, we won't complain. It's fine. They're still related. They're matching, but not exactly. But yeah, that's that sock. And that is 2.25 millimetre needles and 70, no, 64 stitches. Um, and yeah, this was my East Anglia Yarn Festival knitting. I was meant to take it with me on the Saturday. Did I forget? I forgot. Uh, luckily, I barely had time to think, let alone knit. And so I got loads of this done on the Sunday. Um, and then I came down with COVID. That is why I was poorly. I'm feeling much better now. Um, thanks for all the well wishes. I don't know why I was being so like sketchy about what my poorly was. I caught COVID. I, it's been around for three years now and I haven't caught it in all of that time. And so then I caught it. I don't know if I caught it at East Anglia Yarn Festival or what, but you know, that's fine. I caught COVID. And so, uh, I started showing symptoms on the Monday and I tested and it was negative. And then by the Wednesday I was starting to get like tight chest. And so I did another test and it was positive, like balls. Uh, I spent a lot of time in bed. My energy levels weren't what they were. They're still not fully back to what I want them to be, but that's also fine. I managed to get my first full day of dyeing done two days ago. And then yesterday I was really tired, so maybe I overdid it. Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, my sense of taste is slowly coming back. So, yeah. It's not what it was, but I can taste that now, which is progress. But yeah, it's been a rough couple of weeks. Uh, which is why the pre-order has been going on longer than I wanted it to because I wanted to start dyeing up yarn the Wednesday after I got back from East Anglia Yarn Festival and um, yeah, no. I dyed up a little bit but pff, it wasn't a good time. Anyway, final whip that I have on the go because we're not talking about the twists and turns shawl because I'm going to frog it. I just need to um, get the courage up to frog it. And I think I'm going to use the yarn in an elf mail, maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Anyway, uh, I won this bag when um, Becky had, of uh, Soprano Knits, had a Patreon. Uh, she's now started a new uh, creative community, which is called Creative Oasis. Anyway, really cool. Anyway, not the point. I won her Patreon giveaway, which I felt a bit cheeky for because we're BFFs. But I won this, and then I won um, some yarn from... Uh, Oyster and Pearls. It's a Targi in Columbia wool. I'm not convinced I have enough to make a jumper, but I won some of this. So I'm not quite sure what to do with it. Um, but it's just currently here. But I thought I'd finally use the bag, which is from The Fall and the Fox. It's got a little unicorn on it and a little greyhound, and it's really, really pretty. And I have finally started, and I'm now a bit obsessed with, my Be Bold shawl. This was meant to be the project that I was taking with me when I went to Sicily in January, and I left it in the house, along with a load of other stuff, um, because I was concentrating so much on caking up yarn that I um, left packing till the last minute, and anyway, we won't talk about it. Lessons were learned in that moment. Don't pack the morning you're going, pack ahead of time. Good news, I got two new coats out of it, so, because I left my coat here. So, um, I started this very recently. What's, when did I start this? Maybe Sunday? Maybe Sunday. I'd initially started this, but I couldn't work out what stitches I needed to go into. It is not the pattern's fault, it was my fault. I was doing it whilst watching something. I can't do that. I can now, but I needed to establish the pattern, which meant I needed to count my stitches up until about here and then I was like cool I recognize the pattern now we're in it's a two row repeat but I'm much more confident with reading knitting patterns and following knitting patterns than I am with crochet patterns even though I've been crocheting technically longer not really I learned to knit when I was younger and then I stopped knitting and I'd started crocheting but I made like amigurumi type things and then I went back to knitting but I've not done a whole lot of like knitting non toys so um yeah this is the be bold shawl this is a pattern by tracy mustard who is what mustard made on instagram tracymustard.com is where you can find the pattern uh she does have some um available that have been gifted to her if uh you wanted to take advantage of that but if you can afford to buy the pattern please do we want to support makers in this industry but if you want to make this 
and um, there's a cost of living crisis happening right now. I don't know if it's all across the world, but it's definitely happening in the UK. So if you find that things are a little bit tight for you at the moment, there's a few available, uh, but please try and leave those for people that genuinely need them as opposed to uh, you want to save yourself six quid or however much the pattern is. Um, however, this is the Be Bold Shawl. It is a crochet shawl. You need two contrasting colours. That's four. You need two contrasting colours. This is... Uh, this skein was gifted to me by my lovely subscriber. It was ages ago now, and I feel guilty for not using it before, but it needed its perfect project, and it's finally got it. This was also on my list, this project and the yarn combination. Um, so this is Jorstad Creek, and it is uh, their Iona Superwash base, which is 75% merino, 25% mulberry silk. The drape on this, glorious. This purple color is called Just What You Need, and you know what? It is just what I needed. It's 435 yards, but it doesn't say how many grams it is, but I'm guessing it's 100 grams. Where's the skein of my yarn when I need it labeled? Oh, here. No, that's the wrong one, here. 400, so this is, yeah, so it'll be 400 meters per 100 grams. That's the equivalent. Just had to work it out. But yeah, the sheen on this, stunning. The drape on this, get off my bracelet. This is a problem with wearing bracelets um i'll never take them off the drape on this is absolutely glorious i have a little progress keeper from the petite knitter on it little cat paw it's very cute uh, and then i also have this little hot cross bun whoop because tis the season uh, and that's just keeping my stitch so it doesn't come unraveled in my in the bag I'm using my Pedro's plaques little crochet hook I really need to get more crochet hooks from her I'm obsessed I'm obsessed with these they're so comfy but I didn't want to go mental and buy loads uh, but I need to have a look and plan my projects and then buy a hook for the project and then eventually I'll build up my collection and I'll find somewhere nice to store them in because yeah I, this is a five millimeter hook it's what the pattern called for perfect wonderful lovely fine um, and then the contrast is this magical special skein of yarn that I have, I've had sat in my stash since 2017 I think um, this is by Kate Celine and it's the February colorway and it's on her superwash merino base which is 25% nylon 75% superwash merino 425 meters per 100 grams and uh, this I don't know why it was such a special skein of yarn. I just loved it so much and I could never find the perfect project for it. I tried on several occasions to find the perfect project for it. Blah. And I've just decided just, you know, there's never going to be a perfect project for this. It's just going to be sat in my stash for the rest of my life. Finally do something with it. So it pairs really nicely with this. So I've decided it's time to use it. And yeah, I'm hoping it crochets up really nicely. Fingers crossed. Um, because I've put that skein on a pedestal, foolishly. But yeah, so I've got to keep going with this until this weighs a certain amount. It's nice because the way that Tracy's done this is that they've said, um, keep going until you have X amount of grams left and then come back to the pattern. And then, you know, when you've got X amount of grams left, then you start doing this, which is quite nice because one, you're not counting rows the whole time. And two, you can use it as a scrappy project. You can use it as a scrappy project. If you don't quite have a full ball of wool, skein of yarn, ball of wool. If you don't quite have a full ball of wool, that's fine because you just have to go until you've got X amount of grams left and then you can start your next one. And it's just, it means you're not left with all these little piddly little bits like I've got in this box here because it says, because um, it doesn't say do X amount of repeats. You go until, and then hopefully you'll have very little yarn at the end. Lovely. So this is the Be Bold Shawl. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's perfectly mindless. It's exactly what I needed. And yeah, I mean, the only flaw is that I cannot crochet without looking. I can knit without looking. Uh, I cannot crochet without looking. So um, whilst it's mindless enough to be a TV watch, it's not quite a TV, it's not a, a TV project, sorry. It's not quite a TV project because I can't watch the TV whilst doing it. I have to be looking at what I'm doing and listening to the TV. Not ideal, but it's also fine. That's on me not being able to crochet without looking. Also, 
I do prefer a drawstring bag, but I couldn't resist using not using this. So yeah, this is from the Fawn of the Fox. I can't remember if I said. I don't know if it's still available. I don't even know if they're still making bags. Finally, I've been doing a little bit of mending because my husband, my husband the other day said to me, where do I put my socks so you can mend them? I thought he only had two socks that needed mending and I completely, I kept forgetting about them because he didn't put them anywhere where I would mend them. And I said, bring them, bring them down and I'll get them done. And then he produces five socks. So I've mended, well, I've not fully mended one of them because I've, there's another hole in it as well, but I, I got fed up at that point. Uh, so I whipped out my speed weave we've mended this sock this has a giant hole in it and the other side's going to go as well i need i'm going to ask you a question shortly but yeah this had a huge hole in it um you see i feel a bit bad because all of this these socks are my own yarn and i was like this is not a good advert for my own yarn but it is because these are the ones that i've knit him they're the oldest ones i've knit him and he wears them non-stop all winter and these are all my bfl base um, this is the first, one of the first games of yarn I ever dyed. I don't, I could not recreate it now. No idea how I did it, but it, this is one of the first I ever dyed. And then, yeah, these are in the same place. These are both in the same place. And the other two socks that are still downstairs that need mending, going in the same place as well. So I need to ask you a question. And then I've got this one here, which is... Here. Oh, this is my Rage colorway, which I've not dyed in a really, 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 really long time. I don't know if it's actually if I've retired it or what, but it's kind of vaguely festive, so maybe I'll bring it back at Christmas time. This is Pseudo Dragon. This was part of a Feywild collection that I did, and yeah, I always knit him uh, three by one rib socks. Don't know why, just do. Um, and then yeah, this has a hole on the bottom of it, and then there's another one just here that I still need to mend. And yeah. So, obviously, I always do a wedge toe on my socks, which is where you decrease in a wedge. And then you've got a flat end. Uh, but it seems to be that that is where his socks wear out the quickest. And I wonder if there is an alternative toe decrease you can point me in the direction of that is not the wedge. Because, yeah... Obviously, where the decreases happen, there's a bit of a pull on the stitches, and it it is a bit more vulnerable than well, these ones are fine. I mean, maybe he's just not worn them as much. Yeah, there's a bit of a pull on the stitches, and it's just wearing through quicker than the other parts of the sock. And I just wondered if there's an alternative toe I could be looking at, or I need to knit him more socks so he doesn't wear the same ones over and over and over again. And so, um, yeah that might be the alternative solution I need to knit more socks for him so he doesn't wear them out as quickly but yeah I got my speed weave out and I wove there and yeah I've still got a few holes left to mend but I got fed up I basically I did this one first that wasn't the error the error is I did the the difficult one first because uh, it was really big and I was worried and I'm not convinced I left enough room at the top but that's okay it's okay I made the contrast to be a point. I think that this might irritate him. But I think I've mended another one like that on the bottom of his foot. So maybe not. Who knows? Anyway, he wears a lot of hand-knit socks because he um, does a lot of outdoor markets. I also wear my hand-knit socks every day. But the difference is I've got more pairs to go through. So I'm not wearing the same ones all the time. Although I do tend to wear the same ones all the time because I have my comfy ones. And then I've got some that don't fit me very well that I think I need. Some that I think I need to wear out because I knit them so long ago and it's before I knew what fit my foot. Anyway, not the point. Um, yeah, so that is what I've been up to lately regarding my knitting and crochet. So I've mentioned a few times that I'm going to be having a shop update soon. And I am. I have so much yarn in stock and stitch markers. I've got loads of stitch markers from East Anglia Yarn Festival that didn't sell. So I'm going to put them all in the shop and I'm going to have a massive shop update. I mean, I might have them over a couple of shop updates. We'll see how much I get fed up with photos, but I at least want to get some of this out my house. So um, on Saturday the 22nd of April at 4pm BST 
UK time. We're in British summer time now, baby. I will be having a shop update and I'll be putting everything in the shop and it will be available to buy. Even, uh, I will also be putting some of the, uh, my latest yarn collection in the shop that I have over -dyed. Not over -dyed, but I've dyed more of than I've sold. So yes, some of that will be going in and yeah, there's just a bunch of different colorways and different bases and it'll be a really fun time. Um, so that is going to be available. Also, you might have seen on my community post or if you watched my last video, I am having an advent calendar this year. I won't repeat myself too much. Um, just think jewel tones, inspired by spells from Dungeons and Dragons. All of my yarn is dyed in inspired by Dungeons and Dragons anyway, but we're focusing on spells for this advent calendar because it's what the Biscuit Brew Crew on Patreon wanted so it is what we are having uh, they also dictated jewel tones i'm excited i think it's going to be a really fun time i'm really looking forward to dying up it's going to be available on the 13th of may at again 4 p.m bst i'm very consistent with my time i try i do do that on purpose but i might sw start switching up a bit if i start having more frequent shop updates now i'm not doing as many markets anyway i'm going to love you and leave you because i I've lost track on how long I've been talking for and I need to edit this and I need to go nip into town uh, so I'll nip into town then come back and edit it, it'll be fine thank you so so much for watching I hope that you enjoyed this video if you want to see what I have recently um, bought please check out my East Anglia Yarn Festival vlog I've got a big old haul in there that is what I've been shopping with the Patreon giveaway winners have got back to me I still need to send their prizes. I'm really, really sorry. But yes, they'll be going very, very soon. And yeah, I think that's everything I have to say. If you'd like to follow me on social media, that would be absolutely wonderful. The link is in the description box below, along with anything else I think you might need. Like the link to the tea that I'm currently drinking. It's an affiliate link to Bird and Blend. So if you want to shop there and you want to throw a little bit extra my way, delightful. I will not complain but that, there's no pressure, there's never any pressure. And if you'd like to subscribe, wonderful. I post a new video here every single week and on Patreon you get an extra video. Uh, so you get two videos a week over on Patreon, whereas here you just get one. So it's up to you. If you also want to sign up to that, uh, you will be, it will be lovely if you wanted to. But once again, there's never any pressure. You can enjoy all this content for free if you want. Please leave me a comment down below and give this video a thumbs up. Let me know do you have any projects? Have you finished any of the projects that you said you were going to finish? Have you frogged any of the projects you said you're going to frog? What is your latest yarn purchase? Let me live vicariously through you. Are you also embarking on the stash down? It's a very informal. There's no formal thing with it. Uh, how is it going? Because if it's going anything like mine, it is not going well. I keep casting on my own yarn. Are they saying that? This is my own yarn and these are my own yarn technically named the same colourway but very different colourways uh, but nothing else is my own yarn so I feel like I'm doing quite well with my stash down in hindsight but yes I'm just chatting for the sake of chatting I need to try and wrangle my cat out of here even though now she's settled down on my bag of bubble wrap I'm sure it's very comfortable anyway thank you so so much for watching thank you so so much for putting up with me and listening to me chat your ear off for however long it has been and I will see you very soon in my next video. Have a lovely week everyone. Bye!